Hello and thank you for joining me on another episode of The Average EV. Today we're talking about five things you probably didn't know your ID4 could do. Now I know there are a bunch of these videos out there and I promise you, and I checked, I'm pretty sure none of these things are, are on any videos like it. Uh, all those videos usually have the butt warmer trick and the lower all the window trick and all that stuff. These are five things that I think will actually make your experience a little bit better when using the ID4 and hopefully you didn't hear about it. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing is something I have a video about, but if you have never watched any of my videos, then I think that you may not have heard of it. So uh, you can actually set the lane position when driving your car. I'm gonna leave a card so you can check out that full video, uh, but it is a really cool feature I didn't want to um, not put on this list. And essentially what you do, I'll explain it, is when you're driving on a highway, uh, you take your wheel and you move it to whichever position you want to be in so it can either be the far right far left or the center of the lane you hold it there the car is going to fight you a bit because it's going to want to uh, take you back to the center and eventually it'll give up and it'll keep you in that position that's really useful for when you're driving on a highway and there's like a jersey wall or maybe you're in the left lane and there's a bunch of trucks and you want to stay away from them so you can pull it over to the left lane so that is a really cool um feature that not a lot of people know about and isn't super advertised. So again, I'm gonna add a card. You can click that card, check out the video to get all the more specific details and nuances to the setting your lane position. Next, and this is something really cool I've found over time and have finally confirmed. Uh, I'll cut some video footage of everything in this video so you can see kind of what's going on. But say you're listening to some music on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube music, whatever you use, and maybe somebody calls, no, not somebody calls, maybe somebody's talking to you, or you're just trying to pay more attention, or, or whatever it is, or maybe you're sick of listening to music. What you can do is, when you turn your volume all the way down, it actually pauses your music. So it'll stop it wherever it is, and then when you wanna resume, you turn the volume up and it will unpause the music. That's something that I don't think a lot of people know and I think it's a really cool feature. Now I have noticed, say you turn the volume off for an extended period of time, it will actually not unpause it and you need to go back into the mu whatever music app you use to turn it back on. But if it's like a quick, you know, 30 second, one minute uh, pause, you scroll it back up and it will turn your music back on, which I think is a really neat uh, feature. Next is the emergency key. So I discovered this, and maybe you all already know, and because your your dealer showed you, I didn't really ask because I I knew most of the stuff. But there's a little um a little thing that sticks out, and you probably use it to attach your key to a key ring. Uh, but what happens is you can push that back in, or there's a side button, and what you can do is press the side button, and the the little um attachment comes full out and it's your emergency key if you would need it uh, to you know get into your car if um, you know if the battery of the file were to die or start the car or, or, or whatever so it's a super super cool little um, thing that I didn't know about and also what's nice about it too is say uh, you know you're going out I don't know if you all do this but I'll take the key fob off of the key ring and just have the fob and you can push the button you push it back in and it's nice and um, you know slender, whatever the word is, and it'll go right into your pocket uh, and not have to have all the keys hanging about, which is a pretty cool little feature that at least I didn't know about. Maybe you all did. So another cool feature I found is what I'm calling the charge limit override. So essentially what happens is, say you're on a road trip and you're using the built-in navigation, and it's exclusively with the built-in navigation. And maybe you have your charge limit set to 60% or 70%, something like that. Maybe even 80%. Uh, but say you have it set to 60% and it really wants you to charge to like 75%. What the car will do when you plug in, since you're using the built-in navigation with the, um, the charging plan built-in, it will override your charge limit 
and charge up to what it wants to charge to. And so it won't stop automatically at 60% because that's what you had it set on or you forgot to turn it up. It will override it and charge above, which I think is really cool, a uh, really cool nuance too that um, I didn't know about until I honestly used the built-in navigation, which is okay. Um, I'm not sure when that video will come out, but check out that bird trip I took to Chicago using the built-in navigation. I was pleasantly surprised, but there were a few things I needed to tweak to kind of make it work um, optimally. And then the last thing that you probably haven't heard of, or, or maybe you have, um, is how to charge your, uh, how to change your trip info in your display, your driver display. And all you have to do is click OK. So when you have it showing in your display, right now it's on long term, I press OK and it will go to since charge, I press OK again and it will go to since start. So that's really all you have to do. A lot of people have asked about that, I've put that in comments. Um, so I'm assuming someone out there doesn't know and needs to know. Uh, so that's really the last kind of cool feature. I'm sure I'll find more things and make more videos if I notice anything, but those are five things that could uh, make your, your daily life a little bit better. I'm sure most of you probably heard of at least one or two of those things. It's uh, crazy for me to think you haven't heard of any of them, uh, but hopefully you learn at least one new thing that'll help you enjoy and have a better experience in your Volkswagen ID4. Uh, I thought it would be fun. Down in the comments down below, if there's any other uh, hidden features of the ID4 that I didn't include, please put those down below as well to help people out and maybe I'll use them and make a, another uh, compilation of uh, secret features for the ID4. So again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I will see you all next time.